Shalom, beloved. And I welcome you to the prophetic voice of House of Beloved, Shiasa. And she is the woman of Revelation 12. And in the days of her ministry, Diablo is the Satan, the snake Mephistopheles, Beelzebub has been removed for a thousand years in the days of her ministry because he had been the accuser of the brethren and that contradicted what God wanted to say with his kingdom age covenant for he says to all I am your God you are my people I have forgiven all your iniquity sending him to the pit otherwise he would just would have been nya, 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 causing God to become a liar and then he says, I'll write my law and my love upon your heart. Beyond that, none will even need to be taught of me anymore. And it came to pass in celebration of this great event, the reading of a Persian philosopher in Damascus by Cahil Gabran, one inducted into the uh, everlasting gospel as uh, Shiasa has also been. And it came to pass that uh, this man, this uh, philosopher, he said, I cannot tell the fate of this man, Jesus, nor can I say what would befall his disciples. A seed hidden in the heart of an apple is an orchard invisible. Yet should that seed fall upon a rock, it will come unto nothing at all worthwhile. 61, I better put these on it. But this, I say, said that philosopher, the ancient God of Israel is harsh and relentless. Israel should have another God, one who is gentle and forgiving, who would look down upon them with pity, one who would descend with the rays of the sun and walk on the path of their limitations rather than sit forever in the judgment seat to weigh their faults and measure out their wrongdoings. And Israel should bring forth a loving God whose heart is not a jealous heart and whose memory of their shortcomings is brief. One who would not avenge himself upon them even to the third or the fourth generation. And he spoke of the mystery of God because this is our true God who he really is. His name is love and all those who love are born of him and know him because he is love. There is no good person. She asks, is no damn good. I'm no damn good. Cahill, he was no damn good. None of us are. There is not one good. But at the same time, all of us are good, even if we're sleeping, if we have his love, him within us, literally, to keep us alive as a little child, as we do not commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Then there is never any condemnation over us. And there is never no need to get saved because we are saved unless we commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and want to be uh, kicked out into the outer darkness of the gross darkness of lovelessness and the gross ignorance of love, which is the darkest gross darkness of all. And he said, man, here in Syria is like a man in all lands. He would look into the mirror of his own understanding, and therein would he find his deity. He would fashion the gods, make up their gods after their own likeness, and worship that which reflects their own image. And mankind has been worshiping that which reflects our image. We were told not to lean onto our own understandings, and we were disobedient. We grabbed a kingdom age covenant that was never to be given until the latter days, as it is written in Jeremiah 31. 1. And in the latter days, Israel has now been given their covenant as it has been promised. Literally, it says so. And now they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And Israel has now been given a new name, Isaiah 62, 2, Chrislam, because they have inherited all uh, Christians and Islamics who have not committed the unforgivable sin of lovelessness. 
And so in this hour, this is the days of Shiasa, uh, the woman uh, reflecting the glory of love as waters cover the sea shall her inspiration go. And it'll cover the most desolate of lands like sand in the desert. And all radiance of the resplendence of the glory of his love shall now be poured out over all flesh. So no more should we fashion the gods after our own likeness. The veil uh, is now pulled down from off all nations, uh, off the spiritual latter-day mountain of Isaiah 25. For the Lord God has promised in this hour, in the latter days, that he would remove the veil that has covered all mankind. All of us have been blind, groping in the dark. And all of us have failed to see much. We couldn't see the forest of love for the trees and the way. And then the philosopher said, in truth, uh, mankind, we've been praying to our deeper longing, that uh, that deeper longing within us can arise and fulfill the sum of all of our desires. And for there is no depth beyond the soul of a man, and the soul is the deep calling unto itself. Deep calls unto deep. His love calls unto our love, which we buried way deep into hard ground. And we must let it become fallow ground again by letting his uh, living water uh, come through the soil of our soul so that we might be raised up as love within us is raised up tall. And so deep calls unto deep, and there is no other velvety voice to speak of, and there are no other ears to hear. And the philosopher said, even when we in Persia would see our faces in the disk of the sun, and even when we would see our bodies dancing in the fire that we kindled upon the altars, all was in vain with false gods who did not even love us. Now the God of Jesus is the Lord God of all mankind. As it was in the beginning, so is it at the end. Everyone that does not have the God of all mankind it has a false God. Everyone that does not have the good shepherd over all the flocks of man has a false Jesus. Everyone who has a God of conditional love has a false God. There is no such thing as conditional love. Love is patient and kind and long-suffering. Love is all-giving, all-merciful. Love is forgiveness and forgiveness is love. They are the same word flipped around backwards. And now the name above all other names, the secret name of Christ is love, 1 John 4, 7. And every knee will bow at that name because that is the revealed name of his truest heart of hearts. And he is our everlasting father, our majesty of majesties. But know uh, that he cannot even return in this hour, not at all if the restoration does not happen, as Acts 3.21 says, the restoration of Elijah, who has restored all things. I am the latter-day Daniel, who has embraced the destiny of Shiloh, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, one whose soul might not be upright, but the just will live by my faith anyways. Habakkuk 2, Jewish Bible and King James. Because there is no damn good man. A bunch of world of hypocrites are out there judging others as bad when none of us are good. <laughs> Maybe when we're sleeping, if we're having sweet dreams about paradise and heaven above. And know that the false gods of Egypt have cast off their burden of stones, and they've fled to the Nubian desert to be free amongst those who are still free from knowing. Ignorance do we embrace as our most comfortable pillow, and mankind has always been destroyed for their lack of knowledge. How do you cut these days short so no flesh would, all flesh would not perish? You do it by knowledge, and you give the Lord's people what he desires, and restoration knowledge comes only by revelation of revelation. And I'm spelling it out, and no one is listening. And if that does not change in these days that are exactly like Noah's, then Shiasa will die, I will die, uh, and all of our families will die, and all mankind will die, and there will be no death uh, that, that can intervene on our behalf because all will be dead. No birds, no fish, no mankind left at all. Zephaniah 1 1, Malachi 4 6, Isaiah 24. 
uh, Malachi. <laughs> I could go on and, but no one's listening. But this I do know. The false gods of Greece and Rome, Zeus and Jupiter vanishing into their own sunset, Hercules flying off on Pegasus. All those fictional gods were uh, too much like men to live in the ecstasy of men. The groves in which their magic was born have now been cut down by the axes of the Ar Athenians and the Alexandrians because they finally came to the realization that all their gods really were always false, just as the false characteristic of the false Jesus. Uh, the true Christ is the God of everyone, and he's loved every single one of us without exception, as if we were the only one. And he has never been a respecter of man, and believing has never made anyone saved. Many will say, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, sorry, Charlie, you let your love me and you go out, that light gone. And only the old women and the weary men, said the philosophers, still seek the temples of their forefathers because people got smarter and they wised up. And that is why the Bible says in the days of Shiasa, the wise will shine as the sun, the sun of righteousness of Micah 4 arising with healing in his wings to destroy all our gross darkness, to destroy all racism, all bigotry, upon this planet once we realize we are angels or demon wannabes in the flesh. Jesus said we are gods in John 10. The Bible says the first are last, the last are first. And the Bible says that all creation has been groaning with great expectation for this revelation that is now manifested. And for truly as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end that the Lord has bringing forth the knowledge, but this time he's giving us the knowledge keeping us alive so that we may thrive instead of perish. And then the, that man said, but this man, Jesus, this Nazarene, who has spoken of God too vast to be unlike any soul of any man, uh, the almighty, the all-knowing, the all-beautiful, that uh, he is too loving to remember the sins of his creatures. And that is why all faith is now obsolete, as it is written in Hebrews 8. Last sentence of that says, all the phony religion will now just float away as dust. And this God over the Nazarene shall pass over the threshold of the children of love, over all the circle of the earth. And upon his great white throne within heaven, the day shall be when he will be sitting at their hearth, and he shall be a blessing upon their walls and be a light upon their path. And his everlasting flying gospel, flying scroll of Zechariah 5, is now to be a curse amongst all people uh, that have their love not correct, and it will go in and consume them and their house from the inside, for joy truly is an inside job. But my God is the God of Zoroaster, the God who is the sun in the sky and the fire upon the earth. And my God is the light in the bosom of all loving people. And I am content. I need no other God except love. And he is the beloved, the blessed, and the, the uh, adored. And now, only now, with these new understandings, could he possibly become now finally the desire of all nations? And I will be back. I'm going to go for a coffee. I'll be right back. So welcome, love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace. Shiasa and I are giving all the world's loving people who will beat their sword into the sickle a big hand clap for the Lord's arms have never been too short to save. And so in this hour, let our hands now receive all that which the Lord would desire to place within them. For these are the days of the obsolescence of religion as it has been known. So welcome now to the blessing of the Lord's house of beloved uh, from Shiasa, the woman of Revelation 12. Know therefore that the word revelation itself means to veil again. So come shining into a world now belo beloved, 
Uh, apocalypse is the word which means to unveil. Romans 8, 19 says, For the creation has been waiting in eager expectation for the apocalypse of the sons of God. Why do uh, I and Shiasa and others know? The ones that really know, we have had a mentality of inquiry within our prayer life. For it is written in Isaiah 45 of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands, says the Lord God Almighty, command ye me. He wants us to respectfully inquire passionately and to keep knocking on his door so that we can discern what is ahead. So let us welcome at the apocalypse of uh, the day of the veil now being ripped off the latter day mountain, which this channel is, and uh, the channel covered with spiritual food along with House of Beloved. And make sure you uh, subscribe to her and to Anna Grace. I'll be doing something on Anna too. She's uh, another one that has been foretold in the book of Zechariah. So let us welcome the apocalypse with an openness, like an unsealed scroll. The way the world ends in this apocalypse is by holding itself as a single atom before division, uh, not in screams of terror, not in screams of terror, not in screams of terror. For this reason, the most important verse in the Bible is Jeremiah 30, 24. For it is written there, this shall be considered in the latter days. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty, I, the Lord God of all mankind, say unto all flesh, I am your love, and I love you evermore. And he says unto all people, in these days I shall return my fierce and terrifying anger and wrath if my loving people, my children, will just start giving me the desire of my loving heart to start loving one another deeper, to choose to love each other unconditionally. You might not like them all the time. Jesus called uh, many a viper and a snake, but he loved even Peter, whom he called Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. So the way this world ends is by holding itself as a single atom before its electrons and protons go totally ballistic into a world of chaos uh, by the fusion of science that has learned how to split them. And let us uh, now uh, embrace our message of our lover uh, who is the, the, we are the bride of Christ, and he comes as the bridegroom upon the winds of blessedness, and he has put his great uh, sickle into the earth to reap it for his harvest of love. For in these days the prophecy of Amos 7 has come, and he has now revealed uh, Emmanuel himself to be the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken reapers of his like Shiasa and myself. For there is nothing that we need to do lest any man boast. It's all he's been about what he did for all of us before the foundation of the earth was that Lamb of God slain. And so now it's time that uh, we need to uh, welcome the apocalypse in order to scrub a spot wider than before uh, we started. And uh, with me now, come with me now, as, as e let it be as though you've never seen my face as the spirit of love. Rewind me into the fullness before I even had a name gazed into my eye, beloved, gaze there and look deeply and know that I was a place where I made you. And the Lord says, and I took you into me and made you where my love would be right into your mind and uh, the poem that you would make of me. For I loved your flesh and the spirit because love's greatest hope moved into my body. And I knew the possibility of everything, this face, this body too long, an ancient temple, dusty and crumbling for the earth and the heaven, 
crumbling before it even passed away over the yawning ages, and the new temple of the Spirit was raised in three days. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is abiding within you and abiding in every single person? Uh, I was brought up to believe the Holy Spirit was only in these ones or those ones. I had a wixed up, murd religion of uh, a God who's a respecter of men who love certain people best, and this has never been true. And so in this hour, the, know you not that love, through love you can hear the most beautiful choirs of the angels singing in the cathedral of your heart. And I tell you, beloved, that you do not know something until the body knows it. Consider courage to fear and courage to go forward anyhow. Uh, that is the seed of courage. But when courage moves into the body, then and only then you can walk encouraged and become courage. You become courage yourself. Oneness of the courageous and the brave is a concept until you fully begin loving God with all your heart and all your soul and to begin loving your neighbor as yourself. For truly you cannot love any. God that you cannot see if you cannot love those whom you can. And so in this hour, it is time for the apocalypse to reveal the light of love within your eyes. Oh, how great is that light that love once was, a concept and a condition. Love's veil, love's veil that is to be removed. It is the veil of Isaiah 60 that has covered all mankind. It is the veil of Isaiah 25 that shall now be removed off all the nations. For the first is last, and the last is first, and the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as a waterfall covers all that is below it. And so let the living uh, waters come and say to that great flood of love that's coming from the floodgates in heaven, say for that great gushing uh, whirlwind of his blessedness, of his living water, say to it to stop in the middle of your dried up dead gourds. He's going to rip all the trees with dead roots right out of your ground of that valley. So it's time that the veil is now removed. And it so that it, we can become like carbon before pressure, heat, and time brought forth a, a diamond into a, a dimension that was so deep it leaves holes in the earth. And from desire of love to until you do find that, it's time to remember when a crushing concept of love came unto drowned hearts in a great deluge but the righteous floated upon it and they settled. They settled on a mountain from this mountain and there is nothing to do upon this mountain but to walk down the path that we know so well, to let love come down and to walk amongst the ruins of once great temples and to rebuild them with nothing known to the hands of men. When I lay silent at night, a surrendered unfolding turns my pages so that I can become a field that shivers with cravings and the mystery and uh, the misery, rather, and my body can feel like frozen church bells. And they are awaiting the furnace because they are tired with their old songs and stormy sorrow. Uh, then comes within me like a scar that opens over my heart once again. And I say to the physician, heal thyself. And then my eyes blink and spill like reservoirs of love. Replenished, let it always be by infinite waters, the living waters of our Most High. For he is our majesty of majesties, our hero of heroes. And he is the twinkling star of Bethlehem pointing to the crystalline bottomless blue ocean of the deepest depths of his unending adoration 
and love for one and all. And upon that uh, beautiful sapphire sea of the forgetfulness of his forgiveness, he desires to usher him, us all, to his crystalline mountain, where he will remove all of our shame and all of our guilt by his message of his love. And then we will beat our sword into the sickles, for wide is the way unto hell paved by uh, our conditional love, which has always been as phony as a $20 million bill. And so in this hour, it is time to be replenished by his infinite waters coming. And it, the sunshine of his righteousness and the glory of his love will feed uh, and illuminate, feed, feed my wheat and illuminate it with love's precision and then every ache of desolate storehouses within me uh, can come uh, and come alive and prosper. So come and worship in the temple now, beloved. For if holiness is your natural state of being, the body must first know that you are already whole, you see. Language is utterly fragile in an irreversible apocalypse. But the apocalypse in front of us is not uh, irreversible. That is why in Jonah 4, even though God told uh, Jonah to tell the Ninevite people that they would be destroyed in 40 days, God relented just as he is promising us in this hour. It shall be considered in the latter days that he will return his fierce, terrifying anger. Jeremiah 30, 24, the most important message overlooked in this hour. And so realize that it's time to take the pain within us and to know that pain. Uh, otherwise, else yesterday, um, while we'll roll in its ancient wills over the present until we open up the only gift that we are continually unwrapping. And we're continually unwrapping it with all the innocence of a child. Only in the valley of shadows could we ever dream to bid our divinity farewell. Come then and lay down as I do in the blessed eternity of one day for the future is here. The future is now. Today is the tomorrow we worried about yesterday, but today is the day that we can finally learn how to go forth, to go forth in the power and victory of love. For greater is love who is the Lord our God, slain before the foundation of the earth for all. We just must learn how to set it free so that we can be free. For we are beings of love. We are the brightest of all the angelic hosts in our creation. We are the peacocks of his creation. Uh, and as soon as we enter glory, we are sinless as the day we are born. So until next time, don't forget, visit House of Beloved.